problems. What about them? We all have them. Some of us function better when we have them. I think we create some of these problems in order to create the illusion of progress as we solve through them. Problem solving, a fundamental skill introduced in the beginning of our organized educational system. It's no wonder why many spend their time solving through them. In the absence of problems, we seem to create situations that require plenty of problem solving. In fact, the only reason this rhetorical passage is even being inked is because I've hit a roadblock, an unsolved problem, like a third grade exam that I know will come back as a failure. What do I do about that? I can't study it. A general rule of thumb is to change the rules, and so that they work in my favor. But more and more, I've come to realize that the rules, as we perceive them, are imaginary. The rules are a construct of our own personal, social, and economic limitations, and our expectations. Where the hell does this leave me? Unknowing, unsure, a little insecure. I know I'll eventually succeed, uh, but I'm sure I may fall on my face also from time to time. But then again, that could be insecurity talking. It wouldn't be the first time. Yet I'm still here, and I still have my wits about me. But the idea that there are no rules gives me another idea. Since there are no rules to change or manipulate to work in my favor. I guess it is ourselves that bend and change to suit our situations. I guess it is myself that has to change in order to get by and move forward. I guess that at the root of our problem is our own damn selves. On another note, some of our issues are compounded by outsiders placing responsibilities for their problems upon us. This requires a mere adjustment to the formula, changing social aspects and who we associate with. Surround yourself with successful people, and you could find yourself successful. <laughs> that was said to me by one of my old teachers, who taught the idea that in order for you to change, you must also dynamically alter the world around you. First, by dramatically changing associations, and then by changing one's own habits to avoid becoming or remaining part of a social circle that will imminently cause a slip in your efforts and compromise your ability to move forward. Now there's my dilemma. I've made good relationships that I've enriched and also improved my life, but I need to move on from here now. I may need to be drastic and impulsive, and I might have to crack a few eggs. Change is not only necessary; it is obvious, critical, and at the top of my list. Some will see me as bullheaded and stubborn, but really, I'm neither. I simply will not tolerate the status quo. I have to reach out to find my ends and to define the means by which I achieve them. I will miss where I am, but I've always missed where I've been. Change is imminent. I will once again change myself to suit the new suite of problems that I and others will introduce to my life. Which brings me to my final point: it is my life, and I can't forget that. No one lives under my skin but me and my demons. If I can't get it together, no one will do it for me. I need to get radical, off the wall, and creative. I need to bend one way while looking the other. I need to create inspiration around myself to cause change from within. I just need to keep it together. Robert Morris, written March 26, 2004, at 2:29 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Peace.